Hello guys, so welcome back to The Division 2. Let's play part number 3. That's where we are. Uh, in the first part we sort of did uh, more or less uh, downtown east over here. And we sort of uh, cleaned it up uh, more or less. Uh, we found the safe house, we had unlocked the theater settlement which meanwhile is upgraded to uh, level 2. We did all the control points, we took them over. Uh, we had a supply drop here, we have uh, some activity going on here as well. But it's all green, it's no longer uh, red, more or less. Then we moved to uh, the Federal Triangle, which is this area, and we more or less did the same. We did the main missions, we did the side missions, we have uh, discovered the safe house. Also found all the uh, orange boxes, the uh, SHD cache that comes with that and uh, also here we already found uh, one control point I don't exactly know if there's another one here or not so we're slightly moving towards uh, East Mall we are level 11 <coughs> and that also means that uh, also here level 11 to 15 in the southeast over here is more or less unlocked uh, we could play there, but we still have to do everything in the uh, in this area over here. Also here we have a safe house again, which we have to uh, go to, unlock it. That also gives us uh, more SHD tech catches that we have to go search for in this area. There also will be control points here. There are uh, two main missions here, the American History Museum and the Air and Space Museum. We have a side mission here, Agent Brooks. Uh, we also have an other side mission popping up over here, the Empire Autumn Hotel. We have some other side missions over here. Yeah, it's all over the place, uh, as you can see. My idea with this uh, Let's Plays was to uh, sort of catch up with my main driver, but yeah, or in this case, main agent, because I always say driver. Played too much uh, racing games, I guess. But you go further on, um, eventually the idea is to get to level 30. But all of this is only low level play. And uh, the settlement is on uh, level 2, that means we also have hired two people for uh, the White House, which is our base of operation. We have uh, one upgrade there, also there, uh, there will be certain missions, I think this one is one of them. Yeah. The Federal Emergency Bunker, if you do this mission, uh, your base of operations will get an upgrade. We have uh, White House upgrades 1 out of 3, uh, skills 3 out of 8. Not exactly sure uh, the people, we will have a look at that in a second. So we do the East Mall, uh, we go further to um, the South East here, it's 11-11. Then we move uh, 15 to 18, which is uh, over here, this area. Uh, that's downtown west then over here we have a uh, constitutional hall that will be next then we go to the uh, west potomac over here uh, then we have this area this is the west potomac not sure what this area we will have a look in a second and then here the west end uh, at the end and you keep on playing that and then eventually you reach level 26 and then the district union arena stronghold will unlock that's the first of three strongholds you have to do. These are like sort of the ultimate missions within all of this low level structure. Because that's what it is. If you, we have uh, finished this one, we can uh, eventually unlock this one, which is a stronghold Roosevelt Island. We are uh, going to discover this island and take care of business there. Uh, that will only unlock at level 28. Um, it also comes with uh, requirements, these strongholds. This one says uh, five undiscovered missions. You have to be doing uh, all the main missions to get to that point. And also here the same. And then eventually you're gonna end up over here on the Capitol Hill, which is a level 30 stronghold. Once you have done all of that, then the whole game sort of uh, switches. You will no longer have a level, but you will have a gear score. And the gear score is uh, more or less the average of whatever it is that you have on your uh, build. If we look over here, uh, what does it say? 
staff three out of eight so we also have uh, three people hired here at the moment and the theater is upgraded uh, two out of four if we open our gear this is more or less our gear uh, on this agent at this moment in time so we have uh, two weapons we have a pistol and then we have these uh, six gear items so in total we have nine pieces and the average of that you have that is your gear score at this moment in time we are low level so uh, we just go from 1 to 30 trying to get to that capital hill once if that is done then you sort of stop the uh, low level and then you move into the high level which are called world tiers and then it goes with uh, the gear score world tier number one is uh, a gear score somewhere between 250 and 300 you always find better gear better weapons so your average gear score which is the average score of your nine items it goes up and eventually uh, you need to play like uh, two sort of missions and then another stronghold and it keeps going on like that you sort of go over the whole map again and then you go to world tier uh, two three four and five eventually but yeah if we look into that uh, that's a lot of playing if i want to catch up with this agent to my first agent that was my original idea and then i could like stream some stuff with my main agent but that's gonna take a while came to the conclusion that uh, yeah this game in a way never stops if we look in this uh, why is there plastic on the floor yeah we have the quartermaster here also there uh, if we look on that howdy we have uh, three skills unlocked at the moment we have using the turret and the drone and we also have uh, the shield on the side but that's not in our slots at the moment so we cannot use that we do have uh, six HD tech caches available points skill points which we can use uh, not on the skills because we don't have uh, an unlock available at the moment so we're gonna have a look if we can uh, add something here we have six points available what is this material storage crafting storage uh, 1020 we are on 60 for our inventory so we can pick up like 60 different gears and weapons and so it will add another 40 once we reach li uh, level 30 we can put uh, three more points on this and then we have a hundred in our inventory that is a uh, but we cannot do that before we uh, are level 30 and the same goes here for the field proficiency catch we cannot uh, do that until we're level 30 either so that's a bit of a problem uh, let's see also this is crafting materials is locked um, to level 30 now we have unlocked the first two levels but the last one we cannot do we can unlock uh, a new magazine here we will do that already we can also unlock that last one which leaves us with four points left these magazines uh, the sort of blueprints that unlock and then you go to your gr crafting station that's why you need the blueprints that sort of tell you uh, what you can make on the crafting station that's sort of the schedule of making uh, whatever piece in this case uh, some magazines for certain weapons so we'll take a look if we have enough materials and money to uh, make these things we can make them in a second uh, what is this muzzle okay we can unlock one what we are unlocking here now are sort of mods for uh, to put on our weapons This one didn't count. And also the last one we can unlock. And then we have more or less used our six points that we had available. So it's not even that bad. Uh, then we still have uh, some visors. Uh, some grips. And this one uh, could deconstruct our weapons. So I should have put points on that one as well. And the rest has to do with uh, bounties and resources and uh, gives us some extra loadouts loadouts are more or less a save of your uh, your whole build and then a, a signature weapon which is something that comes into play also in the higher levels so uh, who do we have here we have co-op oh yeah that's also something you can see here on hey your there. staff roster uh, we have at the moment we have uh, three out of eight people hired also that is not going very great uh, this one 
as soon as you arrive here in the White House, you sort of get him, uh, co-op Denison. Get a little bit of information here, what he does and what he is. Uh, Inaya is sometime, uh, when we leveled up our theater to level one, we could hire her there and then she moved here to the White House and she is uh, in charge of the crafting station. And we have Grace Larson, she is in charge of uh, the clan. Then we still have uh, Senate Ezera, that is uh, the Dark Zone officer. Charles Douglas unlocks the uh, shooting range. Joshua Summers is our barber, if I'm not mistaken. Otis Sykes uh, unlocks more bounties, and Emma Richards, uh, she unlocks the recalibration uh, station eventually. So we have one more to hire in the theater, uh, the, but the theater still needs to have two upgrades, if I'm not mistaken. Then we move to another settlement, which is called Campus. That's where you can hire these four people. See ya. But yeah, that is all a lot of hiring and a lot, a lot of playing before we get there. So, easiest way to do this. That's what we're gonna do. We're sort of gonna have a uh, look on the Character. situation as it can be. We're gonna log out. Not of the game, but out of this agent. And oh. I will show you guys uh, how that the White House can setting. look like if I go to my main agent. My main agent is no longer level 11, as you can see. But it actually has a gear score of 500, that means world tier number 5, the highest level available. Gear score 500, the highest level available. We're gonna come to with this dude, and then we're gonna go uh, have a look on the White House. Where, what and how can you find there, once you reach that. On the uh, low levels, 1 to 30, you're sort of up against, uh, in the first place, uh, hyenas, that's sort of the uh, enemies. Later on, uh, you also get in contact with uh, outcasts and true sons. Then you do those uh, three strongholds that I mentioned earlier, and then the whole uh, map goes into Safe some sort of detected. invaded uh, situation. And that means that if we now uh, open the map again, it's uh, the same map, but uh, a little bit differently. Downtown East, where everybody, where everything was green on my main agent, is now suddenly red, because it is invaded by the Black Tusk. That's the new opponent. They are uh, a bit more heavily armed. They also have drones. They have some sort of uh, robotic dogs and all kind of stuff. Federal Triangle, again, overtaken here. Completely red again, although it was slightly unlocked on my uh, on my other agent and then uh, the rest as well of course east mall southwest downtown west constitutional hall west potomac foggy bottom that is uh, what this area is called the west end and we also have uh, the three dark zones in the east in the south and in the west the uh, island stronghold is overtaken the uh, District Union is restricted at the moment because we have some invaded missions now. As I said, uh, you sort of have to go over that map again, this time uh, step by step, to get to uh, the World Tier 5. Now that we are World Tier 5 on this agent, uh, yeah, it's sort of invaded missions again to get the stronghold again. And uh, we even get a new stronghold here in the bottom, which is not on my other agent, not even on there. That is a uh, tidal basin. So uh, that is a lot uh, to play for, but if you look over here, the situation is a bit differently. Here we have all skills available, we have all staff available, the theater is completely upgraded, and uh, that is this thing over here. But we also, uh, as I said, get another settlement, and that is over here, and that's called the campus. Also that one is completely upgraded. So we can have a look around on the White House on this agent to see uh, how it eventually uh, looks like. White House is also fully upgraded on this one, so that means uh, three upgrades available. We no longer, no longer have plastic here, but we have some carpet here now and stuff like that. If we're gonna have a look here on our co-op Denison, oh, which is still here, all the skills are unlocked. All the perks are completely uh, used and uh, all use all our points. And the staff processor is complete as well on this agent. 
just having a, a look here, I will do uh, the Let's Play continue uh, on my other agent. But I'm just giving you a sort of overview on what is possible eventually. That also means that I can do some uh, offline stuff on this agent to uh, sort of catch up a little bit faster with, uh, with this one. Later. So we have the co-op, uh, which we also have um, in my other agent. And then we have uh, the crafting station here. That's where you can make all those uh, blueprint things. On my other agent, it is uh, some sort of level. Uh, also, your bench, you can upgrade your bench. I can. Uh, I have a current bench power of gear score 500, which is the maximum. So whatever um, I blueprints that I have, I have some weapons here. Of uh, that throughout the game, you get blueprints from all kind of stuff. We have all kind of mods. Uh, some of these scopes you unlock in the perks. That's how you get them. Uh, others you get by doing missions or they drop or something like that. These blueprints. Uh, what is this here? We have the uh, under barrels, the uh, the grips and that kind of stuff. We have some uh, muzzle mods. We have uh, some gear mods. You can also uh, make those. But they all come with requirements. You need some bucks. You need all kind of materials. Uh, as we can see here, for instance, this number is red here. Titanium. We are missing that at the moment, so we need to go look for some titanium. And uh, the last one is the skill mods. Also, your drone, your turret, and all that kind of stuff. You can mod that with all kind of things. Uh, you also need those blueprints. I think I have all of them. The turret, the shield, the seeker mine, the pulse. The hive, the firefly, the drone, and the campfire. All eight blueprints I have available for those mods. And uh, the score of that thing, it automatically, up if you upgrade uh, also your bench, blueprints will uh, upgrade automatically. So as long as your bench is upgraded, you can make everything. So in my case, I can make everything level 500 here. If you have the materials, if you have the bugs. Um, the second person. The third person, I should say, because the first one you get is Co-op Dennis, the second one was Inaya. The third one is uh, Grace Larson. You hire her, we have to go this way. And eventually uh, she ends up here. I think I showed that in uh, the second part of the stream uh, last time of the Let's Play, uh, because that's eventually who we hired. If she's available, uh, you can create a clan, you can uh, join a clan. And you can get uh, also check your invites. Character. Just do that by uh, pressing escape. You see uh, over here, you see clan. clan. And there you have a progression, a roster and a feed. That is if you're in a clan. If you're not in a clan, you will see uh, create a clan. And over here, you will see in, uh, join a clan if you want to join some other clan. And over here, you will see your uh, invites. Of course, I am in a clan now, as you can see, RMD World. Character. A little clan that we have created. Character. Clan. If I check there in the roster, uh, we have five people at the moment. Myself, uh, Dirk, aka Lol Bocus, Mario, aka uh, Valister, Tom, Steph, and uh, Hikimi are the last uh, two members that joined us. Character. So we also mean we have more than four people now, and that means that uh, there is some stuff that you can do. For instance, uh, these projects here, they become available once you have four people in your clan. Then you have some sort of uh, what's going on here. Basically telling you uh, who did the most for the clan, who's playing the most, that kind of stuff. Over here we have some bounties and we also have a uh, new vendor here now. This clan vendor, uh, he sells some uh, pretty decent stuff occasionally. This is, uh, I, b I believe this is on weekly basis. So every week you can find new stuff here which might help some people in your clan if they don't have that good materials. That's doing business with me. Usually selling a little bit different stuff than uh, the normal vendor which you can find uh, either in the settlements or in the beginning of the White House there on the entry hall. Uh, let's have a look. Then we need to go upstairs I think for uh, the fort people. Eight in total you can hire. Number four is the uh, Dark Zone officer which is somebody you meet once you go into the dark zone, theater settlement, level 3 or level 4, um, you will be able to meet the dark zone officer and hire him. And eventually, 
tonight is there this is sort of uh, where she ends up and if you go here you get uh, different perks f specifically for the dark zone the dark zone is a bit of a special zone uh, in such a way well you have three of them but they're all sort of uh, do the same thing it's sort of like yeah it's a bit of an outside of the game thing uh, in such a way it's it's sort of combination between pve and pvp that means uh, you will find some enemies some uh, ai enemies but at the same time you will also meet some other people and uh, in a way it's all to yourself when you're in the dark zone it's also not advisable to go in there solo because you might run into certain clans or teams that are there with three or four people so yeah you're a little bit uh underpowered as well in uh, your gear as well in persons in general it's like one to four you don't stand much of a chance do you but you can risk it going in there solo and uh, try to avoid those clans but yeah you're up against other people you're up against enemies it's a bit of a tricky zone to go and play around by yourself but you can always try it uh, and it once you play there a bit you get a, a separate uh, level uh, i'm level 18 here now in the dark zone uh, which also goes to um i think to level 30. and every five levels or so uh, you get some certain perks uh in the first one it's just only one in the uh, second tier it has three perks you can choose whatever you want and you sort of connect them uh, through each other as you can see they're all connected and now uh, once i reach level 12 the tier 5 perk unlocks and you can also connect those and it keeps going on like that until uh, oh apparently until level 50 so the dark zone has uh, 50 levels by the looks of it but you level up pretty fast once you do some stuff within that uh, dark zone we haven't been there that much but we're already uh, level 50 um let's have a look so that's the uh, dark zone officer you also have a drone officer somewhere is that this guy here Oh, there she is. Drone controller, you can also uh, talk to her at a certain moment. I think she's uh, in charge of creating some side missions or something like that. Uh, what else do we have? Um, yeah, we have to go downstairs again. Yeah, we can just go straight here. Over here, you find the barber. Uh, which is uh, Joshua Summer, if I'm not mistaken. And that basically unlocks uh, the thing, as you can see here. Which makes you uh, able to uh, change your whole uh, presence in a way. You can change your hair, you can change your uh, hair color, your neck tattoos, your leg tattoos, all that kind of stuff. You can do uh, over here with the barber. Uh, not exactly sure where he is. Probably wandering around somewhere in the White House. Then we have Charles Douglas, then we have to go uh, downstairs to the shooting range. And that is uh, that's a pretty good thing, if you, especially if you have some new weapons and so, you can uh, test them here on the shooting range. You have the uh, different uh, possible... Uh, over here, it basically, you can change the difficulty here, uh, easy, medium, hard, all that kind of stuff. And you basically uh, have to take them down. Those plates that you see in front of you. And uh, the time will take here on the right side. So it gives you an idea which are good weapons. How long it does it take to, to take people down with the, with the gears that you have. With the weapons that you have. Over here. Uh, this is more about accuracy. You see some uh, things pop up. But also they can go like from left to right. That's more uh, this range. Over here, it's all about DPS or the damage per second. Uh, how do you get to the damage per second? If you look on one of your weapons, they come with a damage and an RPM. If you multiply those two and you divide them by 60, that gives your DPS, the damage per second. And of course, uh, the higher the better. Kind of important. If you don't divide it by seconds, then you have the DPM or uh, the damage per minute. Those are kind of numbers which are important. They are more important uh, than this thing over here, which is just the base damage. But base damage in this case of this uh, thing here, which is the invisible hand uh, assault rifle, the AUG uh, A3 CQC. That's the full name of it. The invisible hand uh, 
is a name that uh, specifically to this weapon because we bought it from uh, another special feature in this game which is um, Cassie Mendoza is her name and she is the uh, special vendor and a special vendor shows up uh, if you run into the snitch which is one of those green people on the map so the, the friendly people uh, and if you run into them one of them will have like three question marks uh, on their head and if you run into them you walk up to that person and you talk to him and he will drop a bounty uh, a bounty is usually like a buzzer so a big guy with a, a few upside people and is somewhere wandering around on the map and um, if you pick up that bounty from that person you have about 15 minutes to find the boss and take him down and uh, that is on a countdown so there is a clock showing up on your map you have 15 minutes to locate him and once you have located him uh, you have to take him down if you do that with this uh, specific one then uh, a shopping cart will show up on your map and that is uh, some sort of uh, let's say black market vendor that shows up on your map and you go if you go visit him he's available a certain amount of the day uh, it will tell you if you show up there and he's not uh, open for business then it will tell you it's open in 30 minutes or in one hour and then you go back after that and he is uh, or she in this case because it's Cassie Mendoza is a female uh, she only sells five gear score 500 stuff so even if you're like uh, world tier 4 or whatever and you only have like 440 or so it's very interesting to go there because she sells uh, level 500 stuff that's more or less uh, what it comes down to and one of the stuff that she uh, offered was the invisible hand it's not some weapon that you can find by uh, dropping or from loot or from missions or something you could only buy it from her uh, it's not that uh, particular uh, what is about it is that um, by buying this weapon if you go to the skins uh, was it the solid one I think or or the refraction one of those two specific skins unlocked and it unlocks for all your weapons so then you can use that skin on all of your uh, weapons I think it was a solid admiral though now oh, here it is solid admiral for invisible hand if you unlock this weapon skin uh, it unlocks for all the weapons by obtaining it from the loot so it's kind of a special weapon that we found because it unlocks those skins uh, that kind of stuff is happening always on the side there's always something uh, happening Charles Douglas shooting range uh, that's like uh, number six I think right yeah we already found the barber so uh, what else do we have uh, need to recheck it actually some other guy walking around there with a name above his head so also they uh, these people with the name above their head they all uh, Hello, agent. have something to say let's have a look um, dark zone officer the shooting range and the uh, barber okay take care <laughs> I forgot about him Otis Kikes is upstairs again next to the project a new table will unlock compared to uh, my other agent where I don't have all of these people over here you can find projects uh, yeah once you're on this level you can't keep up anymore it is like you have daily missions VIP missions you have daily projects you have weekly projects you have some special projects going on uh, which comes in and this is an apparel project gives you uh, more clothing stuff and that kind of stuff over here uh, it's uh, some sort of project going for uh, to get a special set of green lo uh, weapons and, and gear in this case uh, specifically for uh, let's have a look so we have to uh, supplies we have to donate here uh, to get this stuff uh, some hired wired uh, M component I have a C component I have and some hired hardwired tech uh, for uh, Douglas and Harding uh, let's have a look we need to donate here uh, an M component which I have one I have C components I also have one of those all the others I do not have so we need to figure out uh, how to get them apparently it's through invaded missions and then uh, the wired tech they would want us to donate 10 we have 25 so that's all fine uh, I don't think this project is on time 
Let's see. Charles Douglas has tracked down components for one of Douglas and Harding's prototype sets. Acquiring them for analysis may prove useful. Uh, this might be some sort of link to exotic weapons. Eventually, because also that is something uh, we will take a look in, uh, into a second. Next to that project thing here is our friend uh, Otis Sykes, number 7 from the uh, staff that we have. And that guy, uh, if you click on that, it will open your map and it will give you the location uh, of certain bounties. You can click on one of them. And uh, in this specific area, there are three available. We have the uh, Emerald Squad, which is a uh, normal bounty, I think. South Low Runners. There we have Shock that we have to take down. Those are these bounties. These are like the specific buses. And we, we have an orange one. The orange are, uh, I think, VIP uh, related. Private Bella, if you take her down, this probably has something to do with the VIP uh, mission or a VIP bounty. Over here we have all these, uh, yeah. Every day there will be, have be an exclamation mark. That means something new. That is uh, daily stuff, usually. That's Otik Sykes, which leaves us with um, one more person. And there, her you will find downstairs. Next to the crafting station, over here. Uh, on the crafting station you can make stuff, but you can also, uh, from Inaya here, that's sort of her job here, you can buy stuff from her. Hey, I'm out she of sells blueprints, blueprints for your craft crafting something? station, and some of them uh, are pretty interesting. Like yesterday I picked up uh, a, an uh, hostel intel, so that gives you some sort of later. information, uh, intel, where you can find certain specific things. Uh, I think it's for a leather belt or something. And then you get some sort of uh, cryptic information and then uh, it tells you that you have to go the most west point in the west or something. Uh, control point is that is the most western control point might drop something. So that's some sort of like cryptical information that you find there telling you that you have to look on your map. Go to the most western uh Control point, which uh, at this moment, which looks to be most western, is the riverside. So if you overtake this riverside gas station, the control point, uh, more than likely it will drop that leather belt somewhere in the supply room. That is how it goes with these control points. You take them over, um, you initiate a takeover, you call for the uh, allies, they show up to help you out, and then some enemy leader shows up, you have to take them down. Then you go into the control point because you have taken it over and then it will be immediately be attacked by another enemy leader and his gang. You have to take him down as well. And then it unlocks within that control point a supply room. In that supply room you can find uh, some gear, some weapons, all that kind of stuff. So it is kind of interesting to uh, overtake these control points all over the map and make them green so that they are belonging to your uh, side of the world, let's call it that. And that sort of uh, more or less covers uh, the whole uh, White House, except for, of course, the last one of our staff, Emma Richards, and she uh, occupies the recalibration station. What can you do there? Uh, that's a bit more complicated, but if you, for instance, if you click on your weapons, yeah, what it immediately says is you do not have enough materials uh, that you can see on the bottom here. We are missing uh, titanium, we are missing also some bugs to recalibrate, but that's not that important. What can you do on these things? It's w it is kind of very important. Is that uh, these weapons over here that you have, you can uh, recalibrate them. So in this case I'm using this uh, invisible hand and it comes with three of these talents here for instance. It has uh, on empty, it has uh, allegro, and it has recharge. Now, if you want to uh, some of these things you don't like, you want something else, you might have some other gun. In this case, I only have one, which is the black market, because it all goes uh, within the same category. In this case, assault rifle, or you can also do uh, submachine guns, light machine guns, shotguns, marksmen, and a whole thing. But only within, in this case, the assault rifle. 
so I only have one available and that uh, if I click on that one it has distance for optimal range it has uh, in rhythm and you read up on all these talents there are a bunch of talents out here and uh, let's say I do not like this recharged which is uh, the third of the talents also that is like you have uh, active talents passive talents and holstered talents it needs to be the same talent so uh, let's say they recharge I do not like it but I do like the uh, in rhythm on my other uh, weapon then I can take this in rhythm take it off my of this weapon and uh, put it on this weapon and that way you can sort of uh, you can sort of look at it like perks or affixes on the weapons and in that way you can sort of make your own like perfect weapon for the the play uh, that you do because it depends a bit like in my case um, I play uh, with an assault rifle and a light machine gun at the moment in my build yeah there is no point in putting uh, talents on there for a uh, submachine or a shotgun or whatever because I'm not using that so always uh, make sure that you build a weapon for your playstyle and that is uh, more or less what you can do in the recalibration uh, thingy for your gear it sort of comes down to the same you have uh, these thingies over here you have the brand set that has um, that's, uh, to do with the, the name of uh, all that gear with whatever brand that is they these brand things come with specific things if you have one of them in this case uh, badger tough gives damage to the elites to the bosses so that is a pretty good one to have if you have two of them you get uh, armor on kill three with skim launcher that is specifically uh, for this one for the badger uh, tough if it's another brand it will have other uh, specific things so you also that is something you just do not pick up a mask or whatever no make sure that you have like for your playstyle make sure you have uh, the right brand that's why you constantly need to uh, craft and loot uh, other gear because you need other brands not only uh, the talents for instance on, yeah these are not, uh, bad examples because they don't have any talents uh, let's pick one like this for instance this uh, backpack has uh, two talents so just like on the weapons I can change if I have another backpack uh, which I do over here I still have one here in my junk and this one has heart hidden uh, that is damage to the elite that is something that's why I kept this thing I want to recalibrate this heart hitting and I want to put it on my backpack over here although it has hardened uh, which is plus 10 percent more uh, armor more health more safety in that way but I want to put more damage to the elite because in total I have like about 50 percent damage to the elite on the build that I have now that needs to go higher uh, if you want to bring down those bosses faster but not can you only uh, you can do the talent but you can also uh, do the attributes over here skill haste armor weapon damage and this one has a uh, critical hit chance skill power and skill haste also here you have three different colors red is offensive blue is defensive and white is uh, utility or skill power like what do we have here on the white we have skill haste plus 10 percent and over here we have skill haste plus 11 percent so i could recalibrate that give me one percent more or I could take off this uh, skill haste 10% and uh, recalibrate it with the skill power here for instance which gives you more skill power on your total uh, build we also have an offensive uh, in this one here an offensive attribute and over here also so over here we have 5% uh, critical hit chance and on this one we have 8% weapon damage which I already modified so I recalibrated that was 3% or something and but one of my other backpacks had 8% uh, so I recalibrated from my other one to this one there's one downside, uh, downside on all of this recalibration though and that is uh, whatever you take the uh, thing off you will lose that so in this case let's say I this is the backpack that I'm using at the moment and I want to recalibrate for instance uh, this here and I want to put the heart hitting on that backpack and I click on this I recalibrate I cannot do that now because I have uh, Can't be that hard. Uh, no stuff going oh wait a minute one step too far 
let's see, can I test the talent? Or oh, even the talent. It probably has to do with the fact that uh, this might be a passive talent and I don't have uh, room for a. Uh, let's see. This is a red. Uh, this is a circle. This is a circle with uh, an arrow. And these are two r circles. So they should. It should work. Why doesn't it work? Why can't I recalibrate this? No idea. Oh, because I have not enough bugs, probably. That might help as well. So I could take up this here and put it on that one. Uh, but if I do that, then I take this off. I sort of deconstruct this weapon in a, in a way, because I take it something of it. By doing that, I will lose this... Uh, in this case it's a backpack not a weapon but it's the same for the weapons whatever you take it off you will lose if you uh, recalibrate it but sometimes you're like this i don't need this backpack uh, it's only it's lower score it's also not the the brand that i want i want the petrov uh, because petrov comes with light machine gun damage as i said you have to build for whatever playstyle you have i play with an assault rifle and a light machine gun so this gives me 10% more damage from light machine guns. So uh, Petrov is a pretty good brand for, m for me personally. Because I use light machine guns in my build. So, And this one, uh, what does this come with? Protection from Elite 5%, which is also not that much. There are other brands which give you 10% uh, protection. So this is a backpack that I totally do not need. So I want to get rid of that, but I'm still keeping it uh, to recalibrate that hard hitting to some other backpack. Uh, it's a bit uh, complicated, this station, but once you get the hang of it, it's a very important one because it helps you to get uh, good perks or affixes or talents or attributes or whatever name you will give it on your, uh, on your main uh, weapon, more or less. But at the moment, uh, we are now uh, with this agent. Uh, we are not playing for months or whatever. No, we are just playing for about a month. Five weeks, maybe. Totally new into the game. We did not play the Division 1, so this is all new for us. Uh, especially that recalibration station uh, is something you really need to read up on and uh, really learn before you get the hang of that. Uh, and there is so much stuff going on in this game. Always something happening uh, on the side here or there. It is uh, quite a lot to uh, take in. Once you are level 30 and you do that Capital Hill uh, Stronghold, you move into the world tiers, the higher levels. That is uh, where we are now. That also means that uh, you ha go to something else and that is this want. thing over here. Specializations. There are four specializations. Gunner, uh, Demolitionist, Survivalist and Sharpshooter. And each of them, depending on which one you activate, you can activate... I can activate uh, Gunner now and uh, within 10 seconds I can activate something else. But whatever you have activated, that is the thing that you... the specialization that you play in. In this case I have Sharpshooter activated. And that means uh, I get a Sniper extra. If you look in my build, Compared to my other agent, where I have two weapons and a pistol, I now also have this thing over here. The TAC 50C rifle, which is a sniper rifle, and that is the signature weapon for the sharpshooter. If you go for a uh, survivalist, then, uh, then you get uh, the crossbow. Then I do no longer have access to the sniper until you activate the sharpshooter again. If you play under the uh, survivalist specialization, you will get the crossbow. And it sort of goes uh, the same for the uh, Demolitionist and it also the same for the Gunner. Demolitionist is a multi-shot grenade launcher that you get. And for the Gunner you get a minigun. So uh, that is something uh, specific. Uh, what else do you have uh, specifically? Is uh, over here. The uh, skills. Um, you get an extra pulse available. Uh, and that is uh, gunner related, which is the banshee pulse. That is if you choose to specialize in gu as gunner, then you get an extra pulse available. Uh, what do we have here? Seeker mine. What is that? Uh, survivalist. 
then you get the Mender Seeker Mine if you choose to play as a survivalist. I'm assuming uh, the turret. Demolitionist, then you get the turret. The artillery uh, turret, uh, which I assume by the looks of it, that uh, it launches uh, something specific, grenades or something like that. We are playing at the moment as a sharpshooter, that is the one that I have activated at the moment. Uh, that means that we have an extra drone available, which is the uh, tactician. The tactician sort of uh, marks enemies with an orange line above their name, uh, uh, yeah, above their uh, avatar. So you see on the map all these orange lines, you know exactly where they are. Hi gangster. So uh, that is more or less specific things that you get for that. Uh, next to that. If you go uh, into the specializations tree, in this case, each of these uh, four different specializations have uh, the same more sort of uh, amount of tree structure. If you click on that, this is the uh, sharpshooter tree. By doing missions, by doing stuff on the map, you get all kind of points. Again, another menu which becomes available. And then uh, you can put in these points uh, all over this place here. Here you have the uh, more or less the tree for the weapons. You can only select three, obviously, because you can only use three. So I have it uh, also here, depending on your playstyle. If you play with um, assault rifle and light machine, as I do, then you need to put your points on these two. If you are not playing with assault rifles or light machine guns, there's no point on putting points on here because it will not give you anything. Each of them have three levels. Each level gives 5% extra uh, damage. So I'm using assault rifle and light machine, so I put like 15% extra on it. Helps make your weapons uh, stronger. But if you don't play it, if you play with, uh, what is this here? The rifles, then you uh, put your points here. Over here we have the uh, snipers or the marksman rifles, shotguns and uh, submachine guns, the SMGs. Then you need to put your points here if you play with that, obviously. This is the sidearm, which is your pistol. Uh, I also put three points on there. So I have assault rifle, light machine gun and uh, pistol. That's the weapons that I use in my build, so. And over here, uh, if you put points on this thing, it gives you uh, a special uh, pistol, more specifically the uh, Sharpshooter 93R. If you deactivate the sharpshooter and you go to one of the other specializations, yeah, you do not have this pistol. So you need to make sure that you have uh, another pistol on the side. If you don't have that, it's going to give you some sort of stock pistol, which is a, a bit of a problem if you're a world tier 5. Not that we use pistol that much, but anyway. Uh, over here, this is specifically for the uh, tactician drone, which is the extra drone becomes available if you choose a sharpshooter. You get some uh, other stuff going here. For instance, it gives you two mods, uh, which are pretty uh, much interesting because they give you 80% more uh, duration and skill haste. So you can use your drones longer and it takes uh, the skill haste more or less, brings the cooldown uh, down with uh, 80%. So instead of one minute before you can use it again, you will now only have like 20 seconds or so to use it again, because I also have uh, some other attributes and talents giving me more skill haste. I think uh, at this moment in time, my drone, once it is uh, done, when, when the time is over, I cannot use it anymore. I think it takes like 15 seconds or something and I can use it again because of uh, these things and also because of uh, some extra attributes and talents that I have uh, on some of my gear. But yeah, you also need to pay attention occasionally because for instance, this one over here, I do not have any points on there, although I still have points available. Because if you have this one activated, it only repairs your uh, health. If you use a medkit, you will not get 100% of your health, but it only repairs it for 50%. So this one is not so interesting to put points on. Uh, but of course, yeah, you will have something uh, benefiting from it, because why does it only give you 50%? But uh, what, the, what, what you get from it is that uh, 20 seconds more uh, resistance from uh, bleed poison and burn which basically means that uh, you have some of those uh, flamethrower uh, 
bitches as we call them because they're usually female and they uh they spread around with their flamethrower and you burn and that is uh, a bit painful <laughs> but uh, you get more resistance from it due to this thing if you put points on here you have 20 seconds more resistance so it doesn't harm you that much uh, and the same goes for uh, poison and bleed uh, and for uh, the flashbangs and such like things like that but I still don't not have point on here because it only uh, if you use a medkit it only repairs it for 50% not the idea uh, what else specifically for sharpshooter is this over here the flashbang grenade so uh, instead of having the normal grenade I now have uh, two more available this is the normal grenade which you normally have if you choose sharp shooter uh, specialization you get the flashbang grenade uh, we have another one here which is uh, demolitionist if you choose the demolitionist specialization then you get this uh, fragmentation grenade to use does not necessarily mean that you have to use it though if you just say oh no i want uh, the normal grenade then you put it on there just by uh, double clicking it it's equipped now so if i now check my build now i have the normal grenade over here but i had the uh, spec uh, the flashbang on it pistol uh, as i have it here now a level 500 sharpshooter that comes from that uh, specialization tree that's where it comes from at this moment that's good enough until i find the uh, liberty d50 which is an exotic weapon that's the highest category available uh, but those are not that easy to find some of them uh, have to do with a little bit of luck to find those things uh, some of them not so much with luck more specifically with doing certain steps that you have to you sort of find some certain parts of that weapon and then uh, step by step you get it three or four different parts uh, you can find all that in some google documents out there or some guides uh, on reddit or uh, on steam or whatever there are guides out there uh, explaining you every step to do to take so you get some parts eventually you get the blueprint and then you can make uh, some exotic weapons uh, at this moment in time i have only one and that is uh, the rootless the rootless level one is something you get by uh, I thought pre-ordering the game on Uplay or uh, probably also connected to the Gold Edition because I did not pre-order the game. Yet, I do have the Rootless here, which is an exotic weapon. But yeah, it's only level 1, so uh, you're not gonna shit uh, many with that. Now, if we go to the crafting station, because it's a blueprint more or less that you get from it, you will see that I have some more Rootlesses over there, more specifically uh, blueprints. But here comes the problem into play. We have that rootless uh, level 1, we can use that. But yeah, it's a level 1, we are meanwhile 500, so you, you don't want to have uh, a level 1. So uh, to get this, this is the rootless upgrade. That will upgrade that rootless to level 500. Uh, with a score, what does this one do? More or less the same, I think. Converts the visual of merciless to rootless. So uh, that is a requirement which is a bit of a problem. Because to be able to upgrade this exotic weapon, I actually need to get my hands on the merciless. And the merciless is another exotic weapon. Uh, although uh, that is a bit to do with luck, uh, the merciless can drop, uh, if I'm not mistaken, by killing outcast bosses. So you need to go in the areas where there is outcast uh, gangs around. You need to find some bosses over there, which of course are the hardest to take down, because that's the highest category. And if you take them down, then it's purely based on luck. Uh, you have to take them down a couple of times probably, although I've heard that uh, it should drop pretty uh, fast, but I, have, I don't have it yet, because more or less me and my friends, we sort of we went into the higher tiers and then we were went through those world tiers and that's sort of where we are now we are only recently that we are uh, world tier 5 and have our score at 500 so we now the next step is to uh, sort of try to find those exotic weapons that means that you have to play certain missions on uh, on hardcore or on um, what's it called uh, yeah ace mode uh, those familiar with my channel 
from the crew, uh, you sort of have like normal mode, hardcore and ace. Well, it's sort of the same here. Here we have uh, normal mode, hardcore and uh, the last category is called challenging. So we have to play on hard or on challenging uh, certain missions and then uh, also that boss will be taken down and yeah and then it depends on what he drops sometimes he will drops uh, some some other stuff but one of those drops should be one point or another a little bit based on luck when it drops it should be the merciless if i have the merciless then i can upgrade uh, my ruthless to the world tiers and then eventually uh what is the requirement for this thing uh, yeah some money and components like you usually need uh, and you need uh, a readless score 250 plus so uh, that's more or less so we have that level one uh, rootless once we have the merciless which is one of the requirements to get this uh, rootless upgrade we can upgrade it to uh, 250 or so I think and then eventually uh, we can upgrade to this thing once we have that upgraded gun we can eventually get this and then you finally have the uh, level 500 rootless which is uh, an assault rifle. There is another assault rifle which is called the uh, Eagle Better and that is uh, more or less the best assault rifle in the game. Uh, but that one you need to find by doing Raid. Raid is sort of the, uh, team PvP. You have to take on the uh, Washington Airport which is over here. Uh, if I'm not mistaken you need to get there by the, uh, with the pilot. But you need a team around because it is the hardest mission in the game one day or another uh, we might attack it but we're not that that far yet we tried pvp once in the beginning so <laughs> we just made it into the world tier and we thought like oh now that we are world tier one you know we had a score of 250 or whatever me and uh, lol bokus we went into pvp and we like yeah we shot 50 bullets at the guy he barely moved he shot five times back and we were dead so uh yeah was not a uh, they were a bit too early to went into PvP, I guess. Now that we have 500, we could uh, try to make some proper build and then go into PvP. That is a, pro a possibility. You can always test uh, your weapons sort of in the dark zones, which is more or less uh, something in between PvP and PvE, so that's always a possibility. Which brings us to the pilot. Uh, I think that's uh, how you get there to the rate. Let me check it. Uh, shooting me. Always a bit of uh, trying to figure out where you are. Because you have all these uh, different stations in uh, in the White House, you also have them outside now. That is one of the upgrades that you have on the White House. Over here we have the bounties, we have the project, just like we have them upstairs. But it's a bit uh, more packed in a smaller area over here. We, we have a vendor, just like inside. He's selling the same stuff as the guy inside, by the way. Here we have conflict, uh, that is to go to uh, PvP. If you want to play PvP, this is the way to go. Crafting station, recalibration station, uh, also here uh, you have all of these things. We go up and here's our helicopter with uh, the pilot. If you uh, go in there, there will be certain things available. So we're going the raid, the Washington leader, huh? National Airport. We're gearing up to kick Black Tusk. At a Washington National Airport. And there, uh, at Washington this moment in time, there is one available location, which is that Washington Airport, and that's Operation Dark Hours. Maybe uh, once uh, the next DLC drops in, because that's sort of where we are. The game um, released in March, somewhere in July, I think, they uh, dropped Episode 1, which is the first DLC. Uh, nothing to worry about in my case. We, I have the Gold Edition, I have... Uh, Episode 1, 2 and 3 included in the Gold Edition, so we don't need to buy the DLC, we will get it anyway. Uh, not exactly sure when Episode 2 and 3 will be released, but that is uh, the next DLC. Episode 2 is already known that it's going to be uh, the Pentagon uh, added, and a whole area around it probably, and a whole story around it. And then uh, Episode 3 uh, later on, I guess. And maybe uh, to come with that, uh, I'm assuming because there are two um, blocks open here with a cross. So I'm assuming that the Washington National Airport came with uh, episode one. There will be some other location available uh, for episode two and also for episode three, I think, because there are still two uh, things open here. 
once you go to the world tiers and you do that uh, tidal basin stronghold you will also unlock two more main missions the uh, national zoo and white oak and you also have some uh, expeditions available the expedition for instance which is kenley college uh, Kenley as College you can see, uh, explore Kenley there. College. I can get you there in no time. Next available at an unannounced time is uh, Kenley College. At the moment, it is not available. I do believe uh, it was available when the DLC came out, but at that moment we were not playing yet. So I hope that uh, at one point or another they become available because there are three uh, available, if I'm not mistaken: the Stuniot Union, uh, the Metro Station, and the Library, I believe all take place on Kenley College uh, Island and you have to do all three of them to for instance to uh, get another weapon which is the diamond back and you, uh, to get that diamond back in this case you don't need to find parts but you need to do three expeditions and those three expeditions take place uh, on that island uh, if you look on that map those are on the north Kenley College that's where you find the three expeditions uh, and then the other main missions are uh, the National Zoo which is on another island and uh, Captain uh, Camp White Oak where you have to uh, sort of arrest the president is over here uh, and other than that yeah I'm not exactly sure where is what but I'm assuming that uh, the Pentagon will come here somewhere so I'm guessing that's where we will go with episode 2 and then uh, episode 3 uh, no idea where else can we go Not so much ups by the looks of it. We can go here, so we're definitely gonna go here at one point or another. Can go here. Oh, we can go also go here, so it might be uh, all this area might be episode 3. Can't go that much to the north. We have three islands on the north. Although I think over there is also seems to be like some sort of city build that might be episode three as well. I'm just gambling here uh, by playing the crew two, which also takes place in America. I sort of know that uh, the Pentagon on that map is more or less over down there somewhere, so that's where episode two will take place more than likely. But yeah, as you can see, that is a lot of stuff happening here eh, in this game, so there is no way that I can. Uh, catch up with my second agent and try to catch up with this one that is just uh, it's gonna take me another month or so to be able to do that we've been playing for about five weeks pretty intensively pretty hardcore to get this thing to world tier 5 and uh, and eventually to uh, level 500 where we are now but now we still need to make uh, yeah specific builds and weapons and so I do have a few but uh, So at the moment I'm running uh, the Invisible Hand assault rifle together with the classic M60 uh, with some... What do we have on there? We have extra which gives 20% uh, uh, more magazine. So instead of 100 I have 120 bullets on this classic M60. Uh, and then we sort of have some sights. The uh, Black Market AKM is uh, yeah, it's not that bad but it's also not uh, that super but I'm keeping it because of... Uh, certain uh, talents and uh, attributes that it has on that I can use uh, on some of my other weapons uh, Black Market T828 is our submachine gun uh, together with the vector this is a bit yeah if we go by the table uh, that we showed in the beginning of the stream damage wise this uh, T828 is the best one and uh, DPS wise damage per second this one is the best so uh, yeah it's a bit uh, that's why I have those two in submachine uh, what do we have here another light machine gun oh this is another uh, assault by the way also here uh, this light machine has uh, extra so 120 instead of 100 bullets but you can for instance you have something like the stoner um, which was not on that list that you saw in the beginning there that is a bit of a, uh, a problem 
because we don't have stats on the uh, newer weapons like the stoner and the uh, carbine 7 so we're not so sure where they come into uh, let's say the top 5 of each of these different uh, the double barrel shotgun is uh, as well damage wise as uh, damage per second wise the highest you can get I think next to the uh, certain exotic weapons of course and we have a uh, I only have one sniper apparently the model 700 I did have an uh, SVD earlier but uh, that is the highest on uh, DPS but um, I think that was uh, 410 or something so I need to find myself another marksman rifle which I can or make but I don't have any uh, decent blueprints for that so I need to uh, go for uh, drops luck drops and uh, we also have a rifle police MK17 MK17 MK20 is the best um, in uh, what is it DPS I think second place in damage so also the damage so if you find an, uh, an 1886 that will have a bit more damage than this thing but if you damage per second then it's the uh, MK17 or MK20 it's uh, more or less the best what I make of it and then of course we still have that uh, exotic rootless level 1 thing here sitting till we find the merciless we cannot do much with that we find first have to uh, find the other one that's sort of where we are with this agent and uh, that's sort of yeah, why I did the let's play switch in a way <laughs> I have that low agent on the other we haven't played that much we just went through the White House and went through all of these uh, menus and we're already one hour into it but that is just uh, how it is with this game and I probably still forgot like half of it what I'm gonna do is uh, first of all see uh, what's coming out here you go into the White House and you go to the left you saw the certain things that you can always check like for instance on that signature weapon you have to be active on the map to uh, get some bullets for that because as you can see out of ammo it has a 15 times scoop that's all very fine but it has no bullets that's not so fine so you have to do some missions or shoot some people or uh, stuff like that and then you will get a few bullets and then you get like two magazines with six bullets eventually I think we pick up some stuff I sort of do my, that's sort of like my uh, daily routing here because if you do this there are some stuff that you can find here the gate is still open, that is not very promising oh yeah, it's least available because yeah, you cannot open this like every five minutes. <laughs> we have some technical holster. Um, I'm just gonna loot it uh, as junk because it doesn't mean we're necessarily going to delete it though. Because we might be able to uh, recalibrate some talents or some attributes from that to my other weapons. Why do I do this route every day? Uh, we're gonna loot that as well because Civilians this is in danger. weapon number one you can find four weapons here on a pretty short route let's put it that way we go back we go up these stairs meanwhile keep an eye on the minimap that it doesn't go red Oh yeah, we're not the only ones looting, also AI occasionally. Here that's hopefully some titanium. No, it's steel. Damn. I need titanium. We drop off here. Weapon number two. A black market 487, that is junk. At this moment in time we have the crafting station, we are on the top level. It's probably better to just make them on your crafting station, but you need to find the blueprints, of course. Uh, what does this 
self-adjusting 20% more armor regeneration. Yeah. We'll do it for now. We dropped uh, down again, by the way. And now we go into the house. Find some electronic or whatever. One of those things you run out pretty quickly. Some more electronics over here. Ceramics this time. It's a bit random what you get from them. Although I thought one point or another the loot was specifically, but we need titanium. Hopefully in this one. Nope, steel. Titanium is usually in those orange bags. <laughs> Weapon number three, another pistol. Wonderful. I needed one though. Because I only have that sharpshooter. If I uh, pick another specialization, then I don't have any pistol. Because then I lose the sharpshooter uh, pistol, so... Until we find the uh, liberty. So this is a very short trip to find three weapons already. And if we go uh, back into the White House and we go out on the other side, you will find another one. This way now. Should have gone a bit further. Now I have to go through the White House. Not that it's a big problem, but. Slowing down when you go through that gate. No idea. basketball field there's also a weapon but you have to go around the area though five titanium that's about freaking time but yeah titanium is a bit of a problem I've noticed and it's one of those things if you start crafting a little bit or recalibrating a little bit you quite use it a lot but I made a mistake or donating a couple of times to these 80 of these things to a weekly project or whatever. And that's not that interesting. <laughs> Gilagort. Mm. 493. But yeah, Gilagort is one of those brands that comes with a uh, offensive attribute that you can mod on it so which is something that I do need because at the moment I'm running a 6, 10, 4 build 6 offensive, 10 defense these things over here 6 offensive, 10 defense and 4 uh, utility or skill power that uh, is a bit high and that is a bit low so I would rather have something like uh, 8, 7, um, 8, 8, 4 or something like that so I need some better gear but which gives me more uh, an assault rifle 488 what does it have on it allegro not that bad preservation what is that killing an enemy repairs 10% armor over 5 seconds headshot skill kills uh, improve the repair requirements uh, 7 or more Defense points we have ten, so that's not a problem. We we have the re, uh, we have it running, but I don't need that weapon, but I might need a talent. That's why you need to pick up these weapons occasionally, even if you don't need the weapon. You need to get the talent so that you can uh, take them off and put them on your weapon with the uh, recalibration station. 
Allegro is not that bad, but I think I have Allegro on my assault as well already. Oh, uh, let's see, what do we have on here? Do we have, don't we have Allegro? Yeah, we do have Allegro on it. Reloading from empty grants 30% weapon handling for 10 seconds. That's the on empty that I have on now. Might put that under thing on there that I just got from that. Uh and the rest of the junk we just sell because we all were uh, also were short a little bit on money. I thought. And that's why I don't specifically uh, like the assault rifles. You pop 30 bullets into them and you have to reload and they are there with 5 or 6 against you. You are standing there reloading and they are shooting at you. That's why I run a light machine gun on the side. We are the kind of people, if you shoot us, we come back to shoot you, my friend. Assuming they are still there. You see the red cross on the mark, so you know exactly where you went down. <laughs> you can see it on the minimap, you can also see it on your... On your uh so, let's have a look in that. Are they still here? No? in distress. They were patrolling, so they move on, but... Why is my... Uh no, we have two public executions here. It's the hammer boy, is it? Yeah, looks like it. Not my favorite, but... But we do get him down, though. Come on. A little help from our drone and some other people. Dropping something. Some kneecaps, apparently. Some melt kits. Sort, just pick up everything. Uh, we have an inventory of a hundred pieces, so not a problem. I didn't that light up the first time.
These were just uh, some hyenas. Not something you really have to worry about. Propaganda broadcast, I'm not gonna mess with that because then you get like the half of the area over you. But we do have a green control point. It's a control point that we have taken over already. So we're gonna speak to the... Uh, uh, to the officer over here. I don't know how much longer we can hold out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can really use your help. We fill them up with whatever we have. They always need something over here. This also contributes to uh, many of your projects where you always have to uh, resupply uh, these control points. So that's what we basically just did here. You do that by talking to the uh, officer. Now that we are here, uh, it also should have a supply room over here. We can restock here to begin with in every of these control points and uh, it also should have a supply room where we can find some stuff where is the supply room is always a question oh, it's underground this time look at that this is uh, definitely junk because it's a purple one we are meanwhile uh, yellow ones that we are running Does this open? It does not open. These yellow cases do not always open, uh, only every couple of hours or whatever. Uh, 482, stability, preservation. We we'll loot it, we'll see if we can use it on some of our other weapons. Other than that, we'll sell it or we deconstruct it afterwards. Whatever it is, if you need materials to deconstruct, if you need money, you sell it. Pretty simple. I also seem to have some sort of echo going on here or something. Some orange thing. See it over here? Some sign, some sort of echo which you can open, but the question is where it is. I don't think it's down here. I think. It's definitely over there. There's some wires going here. It's possible you have to shoot something here to open the door on the other side there. Because it is on the other side. So it is here somewhere. Detected. Near my location. Guarded by hostiles. I also don't need to see it. In proximity. idea where this one is. Also don't see it on my minimap. Unless it's in that building. What is this here?
Back here, drone. Move. Not sure what we found here, but something, all right. Control point nearby. Friendly supply convoy in proximity. Idiot thought that would save him. Access key detected. We got a key to open the gear stash, which sort of should save the perimeter here. Perimeter secured. We got some ceramics and some XP from that. That's what you have with this game. It's constantly something happening. You move like 50 meters, something happens. So I don't know, I read some comments here and there, people stop playing, they find it boring, but then I watch those videos on YouTube. Yeah, the way they play, it is kind of boring. They just ignore everything and they run through it, speed running it. They learn these things, uh, these missions inside out that they know where everybody comes out of the door and yeah, if you play it like that, then it gets boring after a while, I can assume that. We just play it more uh, smoothly, exploring the world. Mm. This is a bit of another problem though. We have those two idiots again. These two are like, I don't know, they're like two brothers or so. They always show up with a shield, so you sort of have to either pop them in the head or uh, in the feet, because you can't touch them on the body because they have that shield blocking them. But they are part of the uh, hyenas, I think. Which is sort of the, uh, yeah, in a way, the weakest faction out there. Then you have the outcasts and the true sons and then the, the toughest are the uh, Black Tusk. Because yeah, they also have drones. They have these stupid robots. Rocket launchers and whatever. Oh, this seems to be a lot of trouble. Friendly combatants nearby. And it is Black Tusk as you can see. At least we got rid of that robot already. Bye-bye, drone.
Kind of okay. Thought we were in more trouble here. That's a mod for our uh, turret. Required skill power, 1300. I don't think we have that though. We have 987. Friendly combatants so that is a mod which will not be very active. Because we don't have enough skill power to actually make it work properly. There are a lot of fuel cans over here, I must say. Other than that, not much happening here at the moment. Yeah, that being said, if you turn your head. there because I hear peep peep that's black tusk Really dude, with 5% health, should not shoot me. What is this here? What's up now, man? Talk to the trainer. Hey, okay. you're handy with a weapon. Wanna help us train? Get into position. And where's the position? shooting practice or whatever over there okay where are you man let's try that again shall we get into position first round are normally four just needed to find out where they were Welcome back. You're listening to Circle Radio. Hey, so we aren't allowed to leave the community. 
Which Times like these, I can't help but think about what it was like when they first issued oh the lockdown. Oh my god, on top of the arrow, wait. We're showing some skills! Scary, and we didn't know what was gonna happen. But we made it through round. that, and we okay. can make it through this. Welcome, Inaya Alkali, to the show. Okay, I guess I'm blind, because I'm totally missing one. How have you been since you left the community? Good. I've been able to refocus on work and be of service. It's been hard having too much time to think about what's really... You know, normally there are four rounds in this thing. But not if you're blind, obviously. And now, time for a little music. That's four on the first round. You get that? Six. No, we're still missing. Which one are we missing? <laughs> no idea. At the same time, we're suddenly dropping to a security uh, thingy. Over there somewhere. Wonderful. Don't see anybody, and then you just happen to run into the door where they come out. I'm good at that lately. Uh, where can we go? This one is the closest by, I think. Another reason why you need to take over these control points. It's closer by to respawn. Some supplies. Yeah, so might slightly. Okay. Be back later, mister. trouble I think
by by game. Oh. Gross. Hast du es saved? Alert level increased to level 2. Mm -hmm. We need level 4. And I also still need to find. Do I have that available? I have a project running which means I need to go to the Riverside gas station which is not ours at the moment. That's a bit of a problem. That being said, we have a green boy co convoy going there so they should be able to help us overtake it. Because I have a project running and I bought a um, I bought a blueprint from uh, Inaya on the crafting station. And a bit of a... Uh, this over here. I bought this. There are reports of a missing museum piece being split up into several pieces. Intel from the local population suggests that one of them is being held by an unspecified hostile faction in the western most control point in DC. Find the component and bring it back for further analysis. I uh, bit of a cryptic description but what you make of it is that you have to go to the uh, most western control point and that uh, seems to be if you look on your map that seems to be this one this one is not so much west if you uh, oh come on move the map a bit put it like that the taxi graveyard is not so much west as this one, so Riverside gas station is the most west. So we have to take that over, that means uh, getting rid of the people in there and the enemy leader. Call for allies, supply, uh, help, they will come and help, we take it over. You go into the control point and then you usually get attacked from outside again by an enemy leader. If you take him down you get access to the supply room and within that supply room it's probably where we're gonna find that um, 
that thing here over here which is the fast leather belt and the reward is the root, the bad and the evil and I think uh, that is part of some sort of exotic weapon the first step in a three or four step process more than likely but we will see uh, can we get there let's try and do that we have a Ah, wait a minute. We can fast travel to that uh, company and I think they are already attacking the control point. So we're just gonna help them out there. But it's a level 2 I think, so might be some issues. We'll see. We will see how good or bad we are doing. Once we arrive there. Middle of trouble probably. Usually if you uh, fast travel to one of those friendly convoys. They're already in trouble. Hostile control point nearby. Friendly reinforcements inbound. Food supplies detected. No more damn presidents. Civilians in danger. We figure that one. Coming. First enemy leader down. Detecting additional hostile contacts. Now we need the defense. Where are they coming from? Wonderful! Just when you take over the control point, the whole thing stops. There we go. Oh no, a crash! Yeah, we figured that one out. That we already figured out.
I don't know what it is with that game. It messes up everything. Everything and always. But other than that, we're still streaming. It's a weird game, that's for sure. Streaming for almost two hours, no problem. Things blowing up and stuff like that as well. And then it suddenly decides to die on me. Nevertheless, we lose all kind of stuff except for the stream. The chat box, the activity feed crashed on me. The game itself crashed. It also crashed my Discord. But not the stream. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the internet, 2019. <coughs> also welcome to my uh, old processor probably. I think that's slightly starting to get a problem. Should be fixed one of the next days or weeks. But yeah, I'm still waiting a little bit because I'm not sure what to do. The i9 processor went down pretty hard on price and that of course has to do with the fact that uh, new processors are coming somewhere in November. So do we wait for a new processor or not? That's always the question. Home. Tap right to go to settings. Which is also... Uh, the question is, have our friendly allies taken down that enemy leader or do we end up in the middle of the fight? Or do we have to go back from start and take it over again? Also a possibility. We need that control point because we need that yellow box in that supply room. Because I think that's where the leather belt is. Or that second enemy leader drops it. That's also a possibility. The leader was not down yet. We have taken over the control point. So more than likely it is green. Hostile broadcast detected. No. Defend the control point. That's what we're doing. There's nobody here. Okay, move. Is that the leader? I don't think so. The leader is yellow. Yeah. Now he comes from the other side, of course. Why is my gun rolling? Got it. Now it tells me we have a complex. Is that ours? Supply room access unlocked. Was that a trick? Do we just need to overtake this one? Yesterday I was on my friend's map when we tried this. And he had this control point already in green. So we're already taking it over. We still have a few things to do though. See, we have taken it over. 
Hostile broadcast picked up. Where is the uh, control point officer? Is that you, man? No. Oh my God! Inside of them. Really? I don't know how much longer our supplies are gonna last. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We know that. They need something again. Stuck. And now find the supply room which I think is upstairs. See what we can find here. None of them dropped it. Health kits we didn't need. Supply room we do need. The yellow box is available. This is all uh, a bit Stuff looted. Hostile broadcast detected. Weapon. Something good? No. Of course not. What does this thing give us? There it is. Keep holsters and trousers in convenient positions on the body. The fast leather belt. Exotic. That's what we wanted. But I think this is... We get a holster, probably. But... But... Where's our project? This one. We have to donate this fast leather belt. Okay. We have it. We just picked it up. So we will donate it. Yes, I am sure we want to donate it. The rewards are the root, the bad and the evil. Which I'm assuming will be more... Collect rewards at the base of operations. Hostile broadcast picked up. You got a project ready to be completed, Agent. Thank you very much. I already read on that. What's ahead of you, my friend? First kill this drone. Don't need it anymore. For now. 15 seconds. Because of all kind of al talents and uh, tribute things. Attributes. Why is my map not working? Another one of those things. We are playing, but not really yet, I think. Base of operations is one of those points where we can fast travel to. Exotics is not something you just get. Unless it's just an exotic holster, that is also a possibility, of course. But seeing we are picking up the evil, the bad, and the uh, whatever it was, uh, we can do that outside as well. Eh? Projects, where are you? Bounties, then that should be projects. Let's see, what do we get? The root, the bad, and the evil. Which is gonna be another project, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it is. Scout has reported that three of the different components are being held by specific individuals of the different factions. Their behavioral patterns suggest that they will only appear near control points if the alert level is high enough. Lure the targets out by getting control points to the highest alert level, which is 4. So it's specific individuals, we have to take them down, and if the nearest control points, it's somewhere in the area of a control point, 
And then we're gonna find the ornate leather holster, the inverted leather holster. And uh, the oiled hammer guards. So we need to get these control points to level 4. Then pick up these individuals, three specifically, which are gonna drop these things. That's what I make of this cryptic info that we get here. And then the rewards will be showdown at high noon saloon. Which is probably another project. Yeah, that is another project. So this is some three, four step projects which will let into something. And seeing it is exotic, is it going to be an exotic holster or is it going to be an exotic? Hmm. I have to figure this one out. We got the leather belt, we donated that. The root, the bat, and the evil. Uh, does it tell us where? No. Their behavioral pattern suggests that they will only appear near control point if the alert level is high enough. Ah, okay. So you just need to get a control point to level 4, no matter where. And if you have a high level, highest alert level. So yeah, level 4 only, if you have one, and then uh, take a peek around on those control points at level 4. Some individuals should show up. Of the different factions, oh no, no, no. So you have to go a bit east, south, west, whatever. The different factions, that means uh, hyenas, outcasts, true sons, maybe even black tusk. So in each and one of them, that's gonna be some belts, boss, big guy or whatever, hammer boy or uh, those gonna hold those ornate leather holster, inverted leather holster, or hammer guards. And then we get another project, because this is the sign for a project. Showdown at the High Noon Saloon. There seems to be uh, some sort of... Because did we get... What did we win? A belt? We have some pisspot gloves here. This has one attribute, this has two... Can we... We have pistol damage 7%, this one only has 4%. But I don't think we can... What do we have on here as well? We have hard hitting on here, that's good. And what is this? What do we have put on there? The talent is hard hitting. And the mod that I put on is uh, Weapon Damage, LMG, Critical Hit and Assault Rifle, Critical Hit. That's pretty gear mod, <laughs> pretty good one in my case because I, I run Assault and uh, LMG. This thing is basically... Uh, cannot use any of this. It only comes with one uh, attribute and this comes with two attributes but I don't think you can recalibrate the second attribute to that, that's something you need to get. Some of these things come with one, two, three or four, depending on the, the brand and such. So this one is just uh, junk. <laughs> what else do we have here? My god, my god. This one is also totally nothing. What is this? Self-adjusting. I don't need that. Over here we have 20% skill duration. That's a pretty good one. But we don't have a uh, talent slot on this uh, that we are running at the moment. So we can also not recalibrate it more than likely. I don't think you can recalibrate from having a talent to not having a talent and then put it in there. That probably will not work. We could, we could use a 20% skill duration though. I'm gonna keep this one here uh, for now. Killer Guard is an interesting brand in such a way that it comes with uh, an offensive uh, 
A fence is a uh, mud here, a mud slot. All the rest uh, of these brands do not have a mud slot in the gloves. Only Gilagar does. So you and it is an offensive one. So you can get a point more there if you uh, if you put this thing on. What does it have? Centered. Yeah, these are different different mods. Eh? This is the red circle. This is so it's either active, holstered, uh, passive, and they are not the same. So I cannot recalibrate this one from to this one because I can't put this one on. It will put my score at four ninety nine, but still good because I get get one more offensive point. I lose the skill point though. Because this one has defensive, offensive skill, and this one only have offensive and defense. So I lose a skill point, which brings my skill power 300 points down. But I can put an offensive gear mod on this one. I have a bunch sitting in in my inventory. So now we have uh, seven, ten, three. Hmm. We lose skill power though. And especially if you're on the road by yourself, the drone and the skill uh, turret kind of help. So losing skill power is not that interesting. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> Still gonna keep this one uh, for the 20% skill duration if I can recalibrate it in, if I can find a better uh, mask in this case. I'm gonna keep this one. Yeah, but this one has two defense attributes. That's totally not interesting. I might use this one, but I cannot put this thing in. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna keep this one. I'm gonna throw this away. I think. This one is also uh, purple. That's totally piss pot. Okay, backpacks. What do we have here? Oh. Do we have hard hitting here? Can we get it on there? Probably not. What do we have on here? Hardened. What is this? Yeah, it still makes not much sense. This is like a circle, so this is certain. Yeah, I don't know these uh, things yet, but it's either um, active or passive, and then uh, holstered. Holstered is something yeah, you put that on your gear, on your weapon, for instance. Uh, it will count for the other weapon, sort of. That's why it's called holstered. The passive talent, you don't have to do anything. You just it will just give you more power and the active talents give you uh, more power if you do something if you you need to perform a certain action but this one this one has hardened which comes with some sort of circle symbol and this one has hard hitting with some circle so why can't I put the hard hidden on this one I tried that earlier it did not work I have to figure that one out uh, I'm gonna uh, mark this as junk for now because I still want to try that one point or another. So I'm going to keep that. The other ones we throw away here. That can go as well. Here we have heart hitting on it. Which is damage to the elite. So that is always something I'm trying to get on all of my... And I need to check the uh, brands list. There is some brands list that you can find on Google. Because there are uh, certain brands out there who have uh, two or even three talents. As you can see, this one has two. Same, same with the attributes. You can have like one. This one has two. Over here it has three. And here it has four. So it depends on the brand. And even not only on the brand, because there are 
different ones like this uh, heraldi here gives you 10% accuracy if you put it on and this is the Artemis fast draw holster but you also have even from heraldi you might have others if with a different name and they come with like two talents or three or so it just not put a holster on or put a mask on it's not that simple this is a Petrov though Petrov if I put two on it then I have two of those because I already have a Petrov running and then also my Tourette skill power goes up 15% which is not that bad but it has no slot and the one I'm running now does have a utility slot which gives me the power on the skill if I put this one on I lose about 400 points on uh, 500 even on skill power and on armor as well that is not that interesting and this one uh, has basically nothing critical hit chance 14% And this one has critical hit hands 3%. So can I recalibrate this? That would be nice. Okay, we're going to keep this one for now. And we're going to try that in a second. What do we have here? Knee pads. What do we have? We have hard hitting on the knee pads. That's fine. So this can go. Critical hit damage. But that's a brand set. So yeah, it's a different brand that has to do with the fact that it's a brand. They each of these brands come with certain uh, set bonuses. If you put one on, you get the first one. If you put two on, you get the second one. If you put three of that same brand on, you get the third one. Third one I don't need. I don't use a pulse, so I don't uh, need pulse skill power. So this can go as well. Uh, Money-wise, we have 2,000, so we're going to sell this time. And apparently we also picked up a bunch of new mods. Yeah, purple ones. Uh, they can go. Well, we have to check it. Eh? Hmm. LMG assault rifle weapon damage. That's a pretty good one for my build. But then I need a uh, offensive. It fits in the offensive protocol mod slots. Yeah, I need to have a uh, offensive slot to put that thing in. That is definitely, although it's only 487, I will keep it. Keep your lower scores mod if they come up with good stuff. One and a half percent of weapon damage. That's the same as on this one. Mm, we'll keep that one as for now. And this is for our Tourette, but that requires a skill point power of 1.3k, which is 1300. I have 980, so this is. Mm. And what is this? 40% health, but that requires 1200 skill for the shield, and I don't use the shield. I'll keep it for now, but. Okay, where are we? I need to sell. Where's the vendor? Is that the vendor over there? Best gear in the city. I've got it right here. Glad sell. to see you, agent. Sell the junk. Three thousand bucks. This will load up my inventory. Thanks. Very nice. Recalibration. We need. That's over here. What were we going to do again? That didn't work, we tried that before. Here. Critical hit chance 3% and on this one we have 14%. So we're gonna recalibrate this one. Into this one. We have the bugs, we have all the materials needed. Very nice. Select that one. <coughs> Explain me this one. We have plus 3% critical hit chance. 
this thing has 14% we're gonna end up with a plus 11 really yeah it's plus 11 compared to oh yeah okay whatever so uh, what's gonna happen is we're gonna destroy this holster by doing so but it will put more percentage on critical hit chance so we're definitely gonna do that it's gonna cost us uh, almost all our money 5200 we have enough uh, steel and titanium or whatever it is we need dismantling it yes thank you very much so now check out our holster weird though if we now check out our holster it has modified 11% critical hit chance <coughs> now I'm not a wandering mad but if you have 14% on one thing we had 3% on this thing the thing that we recalibrated as 14% so normally this one should now have 14% and it gives us modified plus 11 yeah, it's 11% it's higher than it was, but it should be plus 14. But that's a pretty good example of how this recalibration thing works. You had a red, uh, which is an offensive attribute. And we also had a red on the other one, so then you can recalibrate that from one thing to the other. Of course, uh, if we now check our inventory, you see we only have one uh, holster the other one disappeared because by taking off that talent you also deconstruct automatically that other holster but that, that doesn't matter we didn't need it we just wanted that talent which gives us a plus 100 percent modification ah that's why it's probably only 11 it's plus 100 it cannot go higher than 100 can it very nice uh, what is this? The mask. Why have I still mask here? Oh yeah, because of the... Uh, the problem I have with this is just like... It has two uh, defensive points or attributes I already have 10, which is already more than I need. That offensive needs to go up. So I'm just gonna uh, throw this away. Hopefully find a better one. I have no idea if there is a mask with uh, 4 attributes. Might be that 3 is the maximum. Backpack can have 4 if you have certain brands, that I know for sure. But I'm not so sure about the mask. Something we need to check. I might have a look on that um, yeah these things these green are uh, complete sets and they give you uh, quite a bit of uh, all kind of stuff depending on how much of these greens you have which of course can go uh, up to uh, six I think if I put this one on let's see if you put uh, two of these uh, thingies on you have damage to the armor 10% if you put three of them on you have protection from the elites 10% four of them is total armor five red wine and blue when you shoot an enemy apply a debuff to them the buffs are applied in the order red white blue cycling every two seconds seems to be some sort of uh, red decreases damage dealt by the enemy White restores armor to friendlies, or friendlies uh, that shoot his enemy. Blue boosts skill haste to friendlies that shoot his enemy. My god, my god, my god. And it requires, if you have all six of them, the whole full set. Anyone dealing damage to an enemy that has all three debuffs will deal 50% damage to other nearby enemies that have at least one of the debuffs. That seems to be some sort of complicated set. True Patriot it's called. So uh, we have uh, the mask, have great a mask. That's the only one that we have, I think. 
we had some uh, other of that set but they were lower numbers so I throw them out hoping to get 500 but they do not drop that much and you also have uh, uh, we had another set going as well which was ongoing directly but you need those specific things eh? you need to have the great uh, mask you have the uh, Appleton body armor you need the driver excuse uh, backpack Ross hand protector so yeah you need to find all six of them to complete the set uh, which one did we have on this one eh? no. uh, I'm gonna make mark that as favorite as well yeah the only thing I'm keeping this is to have this 20% uh, skill duration but not for now I need to get rid of this stuff because I need money it's hard hitting we tried to get that on there that did not work so that Yeah, that can go. I don't need the 5% protection because there are other branches which gives 10% protection from the elite. So that can go as well for now. Yo, yo, yo. What a mess. Okay, back to the vendor and sell this stuff. We need money. Alert level decreased. Yo, yo, yo. That's no good. We need to get it to level 4, not to level 1 again. Hello there. That probably means you have to s uh, hang around. Uh, sell, please. Sell the junk. Seven hundred bucks. My God. Thanks. This will boost my inventory. I need to get myself some bucks. I deconstructed a little bit too much, which gave me quite some materials. But of course, that means that your bucks stay low, and now we have a little bit of a problem at this moment we cannot nice craft much because we don't you. have the bugs for anything nor recalibrate so we need to do some stuff which uh, gives us money 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 other than that oh, 15 weapons oh yeah I still have a bunch of weapons I can sell what is this here it has a legro on it though could use that uh, wait a minute. This is an assault, right? Has a legro on it, but we already have a legro on our side, so that is fine. This one can go. What else do we have here? Light machine gun. What does it have on it? Anything that we need? <laughs> ah, everlasting, yeah. Nope, nope, nope. Should go. What's this? What do you have on here? Bread baskets. 5% head damage. Headshot damage. We have more than enough of that. 10% reload speed. Just hands. Hmm. But uh, what is that here? That's a marksman rifle. Which we do not use that much. Just gonna throw it out. I need the money at the moment. What does this thing have? Allegro. Hmm. Poo -poo -poo -poo. What's the other one? Preservation. Don't what do we have on this one actually? Accuracy. Cannon. And spike, which. Uh, gives you 30% uh, headshot kills the only problem we have here is uh, this spike is not active because we only have 4 uh, utility points instead of 5 it requires 5 or more so we need from those 10 we need to give in we need to find something which has uh, 1 blue point less but 1 uh, utility point more and then the spike will actually be active why is this weapon only 499 by the way? The Allegro. Uh, the problem with that is if we want to get Allegro on this one, we need to give up on the accuracy. That's not that interesting. 
because that's the same sort of talent. You can see it on those symbols. Uh, one is a circle, the other one is a circle with a line through it, and uh, this is uh, some sort of arrow up within that circle. Some sort of peace symbol, this one. What does this thing has? Uh, stable, lightweight, M4. Yeah, it's all. Uh, that can go as well. The Allegro is not that bad, but I don't want to give up on accuracy. I'm already not that accurate as it is, so no, let's go. Get rid of it, we need the money. Okay, here we also have Allegro, but we have Allegro on our on our uh, assault rifle, so that's fine. Uh, no, I'm not going to deconstruct this time, because I need the money, as I said. Where's the vendor? Backpacks to boot. Sixteen hundred bucks. I appreciate At least the weapons all. give a bit more. Oh. Nice doing business with you. Always forget about this pistol because I hardly ever use them. No, I still have ten weapons. Why is that? Double barrel shotgun is very nice, but I would like to have a five hundred though. Four ninety nine will do it. Uh, that's as good as five hundred. So the only problem is we have shotgun on a very low. Uh, pistol. Hmm, had optimist on it though. Why is the optimist not active? Optimus is weapon damage for every 10% uh, ammo missing from the magazine. So yeah, if you miss, like in this case, 31 bullets. If we miss 15, we get 15% more uh, weapon damage. And what do we have on this thing? Every five meter you are from the target grants plus two percent weapon damage. So the further away you get weapon damage, but uh, yeah. This one requires four or more, and this one requires five or less offensive points. That is not very interesting, is it? Because I could put this uh, optimist on uh, on the sharpshooter by recalibration. But the optimist is only active if you have five or less offensive points. Who is running a build with less five or less uh, offensive points? I have six, and that's already. Uh, I would like to see it being eight or so. Eight ten five, eight nine five, eight ten five four, something like that would be good, I think. So no, that magnum can go. What is this? Strained accuracy. No. Accuracy. And what is this? Distance. 15% optimal range. Optimal range don't really need on a uh, pistol. Where do you use a pistol if you're like in close combat or so? So I could recalibrate the accuracy into this thing and lose the distance. And then I lose that pistol. So I'm going to keep this one. And this can go. Here to check something out? Yeah, you can buy from me, woman. 261. Thanks. This will boost my inventory. 2,700 bucks, meanwhile. Okay. Thanks for the business. I could still uh, sell my mods if I wanted to, but. What do they sell for? 200 bucks, sort of, on average. Yeah, something like that. That will do. Uh, loadouts. What do we have of loadouts? We have div build. That's the one we are running now. We do have um, a light machine with a marksman here. 
that seems to be a rifle and a shotgun and here we have a uh, submachine gun with a rifle those are the four builds that I'm running you can uh, in between those loadouts you can change of course I'm running them at the moment because I'm still building I'm running them at the moment with the same gear so only these two weapons change in all these four loadouts here which of course is something uh, you totally need uh, other gear because I have uh, certain talents and attributes on this gear here which are particularly for uh, assault damage and uh, light machine gun damage so that will totally not work here for uh, this for instance where I run a rifle and a shotgun you need uh, some other stuff here on these things but in case I need uh, a marksman or a shotgun I can quickly out there change to another loadout you can always go uh, click on loadout you just double click on it and it equips it and you're running that even in the middle of a mission you can change between loadouts so but uh, we're running for the moment with assault light machine but this needs to change though 10 is too much defense should have like 7 or 8 that should be fine but the offensive should also be a 7 or 8 or something 885, 886, something like that would be a good build, I think. If we can get that, but then you need, uh, yeah, yeah, like you already need that point here on the uh, on the clubs. There's only one brand that gives that. So that's uh, Alp. Oh, Alp Summit is giving. Yep, Gilagard giving that as well, but Gilagard comes with defensive point, I think. So if we can find a glove which has a... Uh, I don't think there's a glove with four attribute. But if we can find a glove with uh, two or three attributes here, we might be able to win some points. Same here, eh? we need... We need three or four on most of these things, whatever there are... I think there are only two things where you can get four. But if we can have uh, three on each, let's say, then we have 18 points to spend. And then the rest needs to come from the uh, mod points that we have. Because now I have uh, 20, 20 points in total. But it might be you have to go lower and, and build more a balance build, something like 554, five, then you only have 14 points, but if you have the, the, the right brands, you can get some uh, stuff from the brand set bonus, if you put like two of this, two of that, and then maybe two single ones. We have to figure it out. That is for sure. Uh, let's see, two hours and a half running into the show. I think we're going to stop it here because yeah, we Character. started with our low level agent and then we switched to this one so that I could like show you guys the White House and everything completely uh, maxed out which is something we are far from on our other uh, agent Character. what kind of stuff happening on that main agent Oh. Well, uh, right to if we to switch settings. to our normal agent that we are using, where we are running a also assault light machine, carbine 7 and a military M60, but only at level 11, we're messing about. So if you switch to this driver, then it is very smoothly going through it, area by area. Don't have to worry about all these... Uh, projects which comes with like uh, cryptic information and so uh, try to figure it out you're far from that you will not get those kind of projects while you're on uh, the low level section from 1 to 30 once you're in the world tiers that's when all those kind of stuff come into play that will be it for this one I guess the division part 3 a more explanation of the White House the uh, all of these different things stations that we have there how do they work 
take a look into the sharpshooters 3. The first hour of the stream, we basically played anything. Just uh, all information and explanation as far as I can get it. Now, if we quit the game. As I already mentioned uh, before, there is all kind of stuff uh, happening when it comes out there. Uh, let's see if I can uh, sort of give you guys an idea. Those numbers that I'm uh, on about all over the place. If I bring up my Discord here for a second. Oh, that's too much. Let's do it like that. So where do the stats come from? For instance, there's numbers that I was explaining. There are some stats out there in Google Documents that uh, you can find some information in. For instance, for the light machine guns, the M60 is uh, by far the best. It has the best damage. These are uh, normalized stats. These are stats that you play with in uh, Dark Zone and PvP. But it sort of gives you an idea on uh, what the best weapons in each category are. Uh, taking in consideration that some of the new weapons are not on this list. So for the light machines, for instance, the stoner uh, is not on there which is a thing which has a clip size of 200 200 bullets in the magazine but it uh, can be even increased to 300 if you have the extra uh, talent on it and an uh, extra long magazine modded on it then you can go up to 300 bullets but uh, the damage is the highest on the M60 and also the DPS, the damage per second uh, how do you get the DPS? it's uh, pretty simple you multiply your damage with your rpm that gives you the damage per minute the dpm that's kind of important and if you divide it by 60 then you get uh, this number which is the dim damage per second the dps these are sort of in order for the light machine guns so uh, m60 m249 mk46 l86 rpk74 and the mg5 and uh, the stoner is for instance is something that comes into play there as well these are, uh, let's say, um, the normal weapons, the uh, standard, specialized, superior and high-end. Then of course you have the exotics, they sort of more than likely come uh, all the way on top always, but those are a bit harder to find. For the uh, light machine guns, it's pretty okay. Uh, for the assault rifles, the same situation. We have something like a Carbine 7, which is not on this list. It's one of the newer weapons, you can't find it on this list. But if you go over the list there, it says uh, weapon damage wise. Uh, this for mass, for instance, on first place here, it's 5,300 damage. But it has the most uh, DPS, 79,000. But it's not that great. The only reason it is up there is because it has 900 rounds a minute. And if you multiply that, then your DPS will be the highest. But the P416, which is considered uh, one of the better weapons, if you cannot get your hands on the Eagle Better, which is the uh, exotic assault rifle, then this is probably the way to go. The P416 has 6200 damage and it's very close on um, DPS on the FAMAS. So. But the P416 has no, not the most damage. If you go down the list, you find the MK16 has 6500. But this has low, uh, way lower uh, RPM, about 100 less than the uh, P416. Which means that uh, damage per second, the DPS is like, what is it, like 7 to 8 in that list here? While the P416 is in second place. And it has more uh, base damage than the FMS, so the P416 is actually better. The Carbine, I don't know where it actually comes. Don't know what the normalized stats on that thing are. Also, don't, not 100% sure uh, going by these numbers. I think this is more or less uh, either a level 1 or a level 30 uh, base situation because with all the attributes and talents that I have on my weapons I think my assault rifle is uh, something like 150,000 DPS if not more this is only uh, 90 so this has got to be some sort of base uh, stats that uh, you can go by uh, that's for those submachine shotguns same story
the vector has the most uh, DPS and uh, the TA28 has the most damage 8000 but has a lower uh, RPM the vector has 1200 RPM so DPS is uh, automatically, automatically going higher due to that stat already but yeah I uh, at the moment I'm running uh, the uh, AUG A3 the invisible hand that I bought from the uh, black market vendor over there in the shopping cart thing shotgun yeah by far uh, double barrel it has almost um, 5000 more damage than something like uh, as past 12 and DPS wise is yeah, almost triple of all the rest of the shotguns so double barrel for sure um, rifle damage sniper rifles uh, marksman rifles uh, I think it's the other way around actually but M700 is a marksman the MK17 is a rifle so it yeah the title should be uh, the other way around I think so it's not my uh, stuff this is for stuff that you can find in a Google document here and there or on some sort of websites but I'm pretty sure that in game all of these are called rifle and all of these are called marksmen so it's the other way around DMR is a designated marker marksman rifle the pistols the D50 apparently the best you have the 93R here 15 the less that's what I'm running now but I am running the sharpshooter 93R and that is uh, one that you get from the uh, sharpshooter tree in specialization tree that runs with way higher stats than what this thing is giving us here so I'm pretty sure that the charge I also had a 93R uh, next to it those numbers were hugely different so I'm pretty sure that the sharpshooter 93R is uh, coming up way higher on that list but also this is like it's some sort of base stats that you get here because I think it's running 120 DPS 120,000 DPS on that uh, sharpshooter here it says like uh, 74 and 62 it's gotta be that that list is uh anyway here you have uh, also the list of th all the, these talents these are for instance the passive weapon talent accurate uh, legro distance extra chess hands optimized table those things then you have the holster talents which is a, a bit of a longer list as you can see and the active talents yeah that's probably the longest of all I think that's like eight pages you can find all that stuff uh, on Google documents if we're gonna have a look uh, for instance on the division 2 uh, encyclopedia if I click on that then you can find all kind of stuff uh, if you click on these tabs here the brand sets for instance it tells you exactly what you get from one piece two pieces or three pieces so if you use uh, for instance if you use one badger tough you get seven percent damage to the elites if you use two badger tough of your gear you will get uh, that same uh, damage to the elite and also 15 percent armor and so so you can sort of look on this thing and see like okay in my case uh, i'm running assault rifle and an lmg what do i need that kind of stuff you can find it here eh? lmg damage you need a petrov to get 10% assault rifle damage you need Fenris group AB if you have two pieces of Fenris group AB 10% assault rifle damage and 10% protection from the elite so two pieces of Fenris would not be a bad thing but yeah you need to be able to get it the Fenris uh, is only available in uh, holster knee pads and mask so you need to either pick it up from the loot or it drops in a mission or something like that or you pick it up in a supply room uh, on a control point or something you all need to figure it out you have uh, brand specific brand talents you can find everything here weapon mods what they all do weapon stats another one of those uh, stats things that you can find here divided with uh, all of the categories of course assault rifle light machine gun marksman rifles shotguns sidearm uh, submachine guns 
provide the whole list here which brings me to the point let's have a look on the uh, assault rifles um, ba -ba -ba -bum. the carbine 7 is also not in this list so I'm starting to think that all these lists that you find out there might be like from division 1 guns that moved into the division 2 and that the newer weapons are not on the list Here I see the rail spitter. Seems to be some s the shear splinter. The invisible hand here is on that list though. That's the one that I'm running now. What's the difference with the uh, with the normal uh, AUG A3? It's uh, pretty much that it comes with a certain uh, specific skin for all your weapons that you can use. It's an extra uh, skin out there and then you have like yeah you have the uh, the models that are available but it, it gives you like it gives you an idea uh, like for instance the uh, backpack from Badger Tough what I'm running on my build has four uh, attributes the other one uh, Petro Defense also has four for the backpack but like here for instance the gloves you can have clubs with uh, three attributes on it, but it's only from Badger Tough. So yeah, we're not going to get uh, any points from that. I think we have now, uh, we are running, it's got to be one of these here. The Alp Summit uh, we are running, I think, climbing gloves. And it has one... Uh, It has one uh, attribute on it and one talent as well. And they do come with... Um oh, it seems to be random as well. The climbing gloves have either an offensive, either they have one uh, attribute, but it's either offensive, defense, or utility. So I guess I'm a bit lucky there because I got the offensive one at the moment. And it also comes with an offensive gear mod, so you win two offensive points with that one glove. But yeah, it's not always, it's like, like offensive gloves, yeah, it's the only one. Eh? If you want to have a gear mod with offensive. Which is kind of strange. Because I thought Gilagard also had an offensive. I had Gilagard with two defensive, there were two blues, DD. But slot 1 is automatically uh, a defense, apparently. And slot 2 can we uh, all three of them. So yeah, it is a bit of a... Uh, what's this here? Brand attributes. Also that. Can have different attributes, but yeah, depends a bit. Which one it is that you get. Offensive protocol, defensive protocol, utility. system is assault rifle damage that's a system mod that's another one of those things you can have an offensive mod but it can be protocol then you don't have assault rifle damage but then you have assault rifle uh, critical hit chance or hi hit damage so yeah also those mods you need different mods to uh, be able to all fit that together and if you mit all of these different things together, you can get like probably a great build. We have some skill mods here. Oh yeah, that's for the turret and so. Uh, let's see the drone. Um, cooldown reduction. Skill haste I don't even see up here. Or is that uh, what they call here, the cooldown reduction? 
I'm running 80% at the moment and the duration I'm also running 80% because of the sharpshooter specialization uh, that seems to be not taking consideration at all in this table so it's a bit outdated this table I think anyway uh, to give you an idea you can find it out here on Google I will uh, put this uh, document for those interested in the description of the video and now we come to the uh, exotic weapons the lullaby uh, you cannot get as far as I know in game uh, this was a pre-order bonus if you bought the game at Amazon then you get your hands on that one the rootless uh, was also a pre-order bonus they say but I did not pre-order the game I only bought it a couple of weeks ago I did buy the gold edition so I'm assuming that uh, it also comes with uh, the uh, gold edition as soon as you uh, you get the, the level one but the problem with that is it uh, has a bit of a, a requirement in such a way that you need to find the merciless and the merciless is uh, an assault rifle which you have to get by uh, dropping I think let's have a look I put it out here all I saw the you can find it all also here in this article I will also put a link to this article where you can find it all but I sort of typed it out for uh, the guys here on the discord sort of to sum it up a little bit the merciless uh, more or less drops uh, by killing hyena bosses uh, best to do it is in the Jefferson Trade Center or bank headquarters missions now we come to the shatterbox uh, that's a bit of a different story as you can see that's a bit more text because this part uh, this weapon needs three different parts and a blueprint and those uh, all have to drop in different situations part number one is the loaded canister which you have to uh, open hyena crates in downtown east to get uh, that part and of course it needs a drop hyena crates uh, how do you open them with a hyena key and the hyena key you get by uh, killing buses or by uh, finding the key somewhere uh, mostly underground tunnels and so you find uh, on the uh, on the walls you find like a little box that you can open and there you can pick up some keys that can be from the hyena or any other faction but that's how you get your hands on those keys and of course the system reminds how many keys you have and then in certain missions like in the grand washington hotel there are two of those crates uh, the mlk Liber library that is a site mission i think there you find one but you can also find them uh, occasionally here or down there uh, out here on the map if you know where they are and you find your way into the grand washington hotel you don't even have to do the mission if you just know where to find the crates you can go there and try to open them but more than likely it's not going to drop out of the first hyena crate you probably have to open a bunch of them to eventually get that part uh, if you open hyena crate in downtown east part number two is the creative mac you have to open hyena crates again but this time not in downtown east but in federal triangle available in the uh, jefferson trade center mission for instance other than that uh, somewhere out there on the map if you know where they are you can open the crates part number three is modified mods uh, that is open hyena crates in uh, judiciary square area but uh, there's no specific mission there where you can find them so you're gonna have to look for the crates yourself if you know where they are then you have three parts if you have those three parts then you should drop uh, to the uh, bank headquarters mission and that will eventually uh, it says randomly so you might have to do a few of those missions it eventually it will drop the blueprint so if you have found those three different parts and the blueprint then you can go to your crafting station and make the chatterbox which is a uh, submachine gun then we have uh, exotic weapon number five which is the liberty d50 that's a pistol uh, but also this one few few things need uh, to do it the first one you should have if you go to the low level missions and you do the stronghold and the capital it drops the trigger and mechanism uh, automatically so some people will even have it without even knowing that first part 
The second part is the receiver and the paint job. You need to do American History Museum on hard or challenging difficulty. And then uh, Viewpoint Museum on hard or challenging difficulty to get part number three. And then you get uh, the grips and the blueprint on the space administration on hard or challenging difficulty. But first of all, before you do these uh, four different steps, you have to uh, get your hands on the Liberty D50. You need a, a base D50 pistol, not the Liberty, of course. And that is um, most likely to drop in the Potemic event mission on a hard or challenging difficulty. Will it give you, of course, a better chance. So you need a D50 pistol, then you need to, uh, you get more or less by doing level 30 stronghold you already get that first part, but then part number two, three, and four, you need to do a couple of these missions on hard difficulty to get the blueprint, and then eventually you can craft that uh, pistol. Sweet Dreams is uh, a shotgun, and uh, this is a random drop you get from killing outcast bosses. Uh, the outcast is hanging about uh, more or less in the west, so it's like a Potemic event or Roosevelt Island stronghold. And of course, if you do it on hard or challenging difficulty, it will increase your chances of this. So this is just, uh, this is luck based, the exotic shotgun and the, uh, what is this? The pestilence, which is a light machine gun. And how does that drop? That's a random drop you get from killing outcast or true sons bosses, uh, but in the dark zone. Any of the three, three dark zones uh, should work. And then we come, uh, we're going to skip this one for a second, because that's uh, the most thing to do. The Eagle Better is, uh, yeah, on theory, pretty simple to get, because you only have to do a uh, raid, which is the uh, team PvP, more or less. The only problem with that is that you have to kill all the bosses in the Washington airport. Uh, the dark hours thing there, and that's uh, the most difficult mission in the game. So uh, any of those bosses that come into that mission, and there are a bunch of them, can drop the Eagle Bearer Blueprint. The only problem is it's a random drop, so you might have to complete it a few times, and it's already not that easy to complete it one time. There is a guarantee though, if you can complete it five times, then you will be guaranteed the Eagle Bearer, because then you will get it, uh, and you will be able to find it in the cargo section uh, of one of those planes on the, uh, on the tarmac there. But yeah, if it's already hard to complete it one time, probably going to be harder to complete it five times, right? And you need a team with people that know what they are doing as well, from what I... Uh, you can saw, you can look for it uh, Dark Hours or something, or Raid, uh, you can look for it on uh, on YouTube. There are several teams out there who've done it. Some of them even speedrunning it, trying to get it on uh, 12 minutes or whatever. So that's the Eagle Bearer. Uh, then we have the Diamondback. Pretty uh, snake bite weapon, I should say. It shoots very slowly, but it uh, the bullets sort of stick to the into the uh, enemy, and then it all kind of stuff is uh, happening with those bullets. So it's sort of like a snake bite. It sort of starts working poisonous uh, step by step. To be able to get that, uh, that's probably the easiest one to get in such a way, you just have to do three expeditions to the uh, Kenley College Island. Kenley Library, Kenley Metro Station, and Kenley Student Union. So that sounds easy, but it isn't, because at this moment in time, uh, although I have access to the Kenley College Island, I cannot go there because the pilot does not want to fly there. In such a way, these missions uh, or these expeditions are at the moment, they are not available. They dropped the, uh, the first DLC, episode one, they dropped that in July, and then I believe those missions were available at one point, all three of them, one by one, or week after week, or. But now I cannot see them, and now it says something like uh, Kenley College uh, Island is available within an unannounced time or something. So yeah, if the pilot doesn't want to fly there, it's pretty hard to do those three expeditions, isn't it? But if you if they are available and you can do them, you should be able to get this thing if you do all three of them. Which leaves us with uh, the sniper, the nemesis. Very popular one, but it's also uh, a pretty tough one to get. 
Step number one, you need to play Tidal Basin, which is the new stronghold. Uh, not only once, but twice. And uh, so you do like, um, you go through all the levels, 1 to 30. You can do the Capitol Hill stronghold eventually. And then you move into World Tears. Then you have to go through the World Tears. Uh, 1, 2 and, two and so on. Eventually you unlock the District Union stronghold. Then you have to do two more missions, then you unlock the Roosevelt Island, which will put you into uh, World Tier 4. Then you do one or two more missions, then you can do the Capital Stronghold again, which will put you in... Uh, that will put you in World Tier 4. And then eventually you can do a Tidal Basin, which is the last added stronghold. was not originally in the game, I think, but they added it with the first DLC, another stronghold. And that will put you into World Tier number 5. Sort of. And then you have the invaded missions, then you have to sort of go through it all again because uh, you need to do the Tidal Basin for the second time and the only way to get there is to do the other strongholds again. And to get to those strongholds you need to do one or two invaded missions or something. So it's a bit of work to finally get there for the second time. If you do that for the second time, which is only step one, if you do this for the second time, then uh, in the beginning of the mission you need to uh, activate a computer somewhere in a building and if you uh, go upstairs in that building, there's a stair, and if you go up there, uh, you will find a black dust key card. It will just drop there. And you need that key card to open a door later on in the mission. Uh, it's a uh, the inside of the cargo of the hovercraft. If you uh, cleared out the place there, because you will have some enemies over there first. And if you go uh, at the end, on the left is a uh, room with a key card, and if you have that key card, you can open that door. And there you will find, uh, I think you can find a phone there as well, because we have been doing Tidal Basin the first time a uh, couple of days ago, and we found a phone there, but we could not go to into that door because the door didn't want to open. But our, on our map it showed a uh, phone, so yeah, we thought, okay, how do we get, we, we searched that whole hovercraft, tried to see if there was some electricity that we had to shoot or something to open the door, because that's sometimes how it goes in this game. Sometimes you need to figure out a puzzle here or there, but not in this case. The only way that door opens is with that key card, and that needs to drop the second time you do Tidal Basin, so. There you will find a weapon, which is called the uh, Adrestia SR1, and you... Uh, do not need to use it, you do not need to sell it, but you need to deconstruct it. And if you deconstruct it, then you get scope the tally. So uh, that is uh, part number one for that sniper weapon. Part number two is you have to kill Prime, which is a bot which can be found in the Capital Stronghold. So the Capital Stronghold, in other words, you have to do for the third time. And you cannot get to that capital stronghold unless you uh, do certain invaded missions step by step and then eventually you get to the capital. So it's, sort of, it's always the same. So you do like some missions, you do the district union stronghold, do some missions, you do the Roosevelt Island stronghold, do some missions, and then eventually you, you end up on that capital stronghold. Which also means to get there you need to do the other strongholds for the third time. And then it should drop a barrel discharge. That is part number two. Part number three is you have to kill Shorty, which is a boss, which can be found in the Roosevelt Island stronghold. I think you get the point by now. That means that we are uh, already like for the fourth time on the Roosevelt uh, Island stronghold. And then he should drop uh, Stock the Bolt. Step number four is uh, kill Klutz, which is a boss, which can be found in the District Union arena. Again, that's like the fifth time or so that we do the District and Union arena. And if you have all those parts, then uh, you need to get your hands on the blueprint and that should be dropped by killing Puck. And that is a boss which can be found in the Invaded Grand Washington Hotel mission. Which by that time is probably the sixth time that you do the Grand Washington then. Because uh, I'm assuming you have to do this step by step. So this nemesis is a, it's a pretty good one from what I hear, but it's also probably one of the hardest to get most steps to go through that uh, sort of sums it up and that also means that uh, this thing can go back uh, to where it belongs 
meaning on my second screen. That's sort of how I do things. And also means uh, we're going to cut it here. About three hours, part number three. We didn't even play that much in the game, but yeah. I sort of um, skipped some gameplay to give you a bit more information on what is going on. And then uh, maybe uh, next time if we're out with the team or so, I can just uh, stream from that, from my main agent, because catching up from uh, agent number two, with the one I was streaming with to agent number one is a bit, uh, it's going to take a bit too long to catch up with those two. So it was easier to show you guys uh, what you eventually will uh, get from all these different missions and stuff. Show you the White House and all that kind of stuff. Fully upgraded. Because I have two agents, I can do that uh, pretty easy. But I might do it with my second agent, but then uh, without explaining it all. Because I'll explain it in this uh, part already. So in the next parts, I will just play either with my main agent or with my second agent. But then quickly going through it, we know what we have to do to get all that stuff. Uh, so we'll do it like that. That will be it for this one. I will see you guys in the next one, probably one of the next days, uh, the crew 2 or so, uh, I think. We'll see, maybe some division through it as well. We'll mix it up a bit. See you guys then, and bye for now.